everyone. Welcome to this week's Karma Cards. We've got a huge day in energy today. Uh, as I'm recording this, today is June 21st, which is a summer solstice. So happy solstice, everyone. It's also the beginning of cancer season. So we're moving into that beautiful intuitive energy time. I love this energy. Um, also, in energetic news updates, we had something huge happen with the Schumann Resonance. If you're following the Blythe Starlight Telegram channel, I've been trying to send information there so that I can um, share with you more thoroughly what's going on. But basically, over the last weekend, so this was Father's Day weekend, I believe it started on the 16th, uh, early morning or early morning 17th of June, we had a huge spike on the Schumann resonance. It hit 190 Hertz, which is the highest it's ever hit. And when it did that, the pattern that the machine makes changed. So usually it's vertical lines of different varying colors, which shows the spikes in electromagnetic frequency coming off of the earth. And instead of being these vertical lines, we had these beautiful uh, horizontal helix shapes that looked like human DNA. In fact, many people are saying it was a message about human, um, human DNA receiving upgrades. It was beautiful and it lasted for at least 48 hours, if not a little longer. And then right after that, we get this blackout bar, which represents a timeline jump and then a huge spike, <laughs> a huge white spike of energy. And now we're sort of back to that regular pattern we're used to seeing. Although today it is at 58 um, hertz right now. So we're still on the high side of whatever just happened there. Now I was just on the Shining the Light on podcast with my friend Amber Romaniak, and we were talking about it there too. So you should check that video out. It's going to be coming out soon on my channel, or you can go to Amber's channel, which I believe is at Amber Romaniak. If you look it up, uh, you can find the video there. But I had asked my team, what was it that we received with that energy? And they let us know that huge downloads did come through. So perhaps we did receive DNA upgrades. It sure seems like we did, as well as um, your, your mission, your soul mission is delivered. It's now within you and it's waiting to open. And that was really exciting. So if you want to hear more about that, check out that um, Shining the Light on podcast about the Schumann Resonance. This beautiful energy, you may have felt this, you probably did feel this. I know a lot of people felt tired, myself included. There was a lot of resting that needed to happen, especially as we we're receiving these upgrades. You might have had other symptoms. Sometimes people go through different aches and pains as it's uh, as information is being moved around in the body or, or trapped emotions or lower frequencies are being released, we'll feel that as well. So make sure that you're staying hydrated, giving yourself plenty of time to rest and getting outside. Get the sun on your skin and your feet on the ground so that you can make the most of these beautiful energetic upgrades that are coming our way. So my message from the team this week is really interesting. They brought forth a message about cleansing and purifying, getting ready for something new to come in. So they were talking about paying attention to your emotional state because uh, as I had mentioned, with these energetic upgrades coming in, there is stuff that gets pushed out, right? We might have stuck or lower emotions that are finally um, loosening up and coming up to the surface. We might have old memories that might contain uh, trauma or information about things that you're still holding on to coming up and into your consciousness. And that can create feelings of overwhelm, of disappointment, of feeling low frequency, uh, or being bogged down. And they likened this to sort of like mud. It feels like you're in the mud. So if you're feeling that way, if you feel in the mud, what they're recommending is purification through water. So water is often used as a purifier, I mean, we use it um, to clean ourselves, we use it to clean our home, we use it, you know, the rains clean the earth, the tears 
clean ourselves out emotionally. And so it's making contact with water, which I think is really beautiful because, like I said, we just moved into cancer season, which is a water sign and which is connected to emotional depth in our inner world as well as our intuitive knowing. So it's a beautiful kind of uh, cross moment happening here with these messages about water. So again, they're letting you know that that they would recommend a water ceremony or a cleansing ceremony happen, especially today. Now you might not be hearing this on the summer solstice, but whenever you hear it, that's when you're intended to hear the message. So consider doing something cleansing for yourself today using water. And again, that might be allowing yourself to release heavy emotions through tears. Um, I, I had a relative I remember who told me that tears were a way of poison leaving the body so crying or allowing yourself to cry if that's what's called for is very healing cathartic and cleansing to the emotional body uh, whereas having a shower or taking a bath is cleansing in that you know the physical way um, or even being near water, right? Because when we're near bodies of water like the ocean, when we're near the ocean, if you're lucky enough to have an ocean nearby or an ocean you can go to, the negative ions that come off of the ocean actually help to clean your aura. Um, and if you can get near any running water, just like the shower as well, can help to clear the aura. It can help move that lower frequency out and allow more electrons in and electrons give you that sort of energized refreshed feeling so the message is about preparing for the sacred by cleansing yourself of those lower energies and i want to be clear that they're talking about doing this in a ritualistic way so this is a heightened experience that's not just taking a shower or a bath um, but rather more of an intentional experience where you're connecting with the water and you're asking it to cleanse away any lower frequencies, any negative vibrations, any um, old emotions that feel stuck anywhere that you feel like things aren't moving or you feel bogged down. You want to consciously connect with the water and ask it to cleanse and clear you. So how can you make your next cleansing experience ritualistic? Well, let's say that you are feeling emotional and you feel like you might be on the verge of tears. You might move yourself somewhere where you feel it is safe to fully let yourself cry and express yourself without worrying about um, embarrassing yourself or having other people pry on you. That could be a way where you set aside time and space to let yourself emotionally release. Um, or you could plan to go for a walk next to the water and as you're walking next to the water just imagine that all those beautiful negative ions coming off the ocean are cleansing and clearing your aura or the next time that you have a bath or a shower you could do things to help make it to raise the intention of it like you could light some candles you could put on music that's soothing and feels sacred you could um, bring flowers into the room. You could sprinkle sea salt uh, on the shower floor and allow that to help pull negativity out of the body through your feet. Um, it's just taking the experience, elevating it, and staying conscious while you are performing it. For example, you could also do like a scrub on the body and imagine that not only is it sloughing away dead skin, but it's sloughing away anything that is keeping you feeling heavy or stuck or confused. Like it's just moving that away. And these are ways that you can prepare yourself to receive the higher and more sacred information that's coming through at this time you're still gonna receive it even if you don't do a cleansing ritual. You just might find that it feels like it takes longer or that you have to go through some kind of release, whether it's a lot of sleeping, whether it's a lot of crying, whether it's a lot of purging on the physical level, <laughs> you know what I mean? You'll still get the information. The cleansing ritual is intended to make it go much smoother and make it a softer transition between this now point and the next point as the energy increases. 
So however you want to do it, all you're doing is setting an intention, staying conscious of it and heightening the experience for yourself. So it feels like it's out of your everyday routine and at a heightened level. And with that, let me share with you this week's karma card. All right, if you're new to karma cards, let me quickly show you how these work. I have three decks here, planets, signs of the zodiac, and the houses of astrology. And I've already asked my team, what's the message you have for us this week? And I've got two sets of answers, a set in red, which are action related, and a set in blue, which are outcome related. And the way that you play is you tune in with that beautiful intuition of yours and feel, what do you need right now? Are you looking for action related guidance? I just saw a bunch of bees, I love that. Bees are very spiritual sign. Okay, sorry. If you want action related guidance, outcome related guidance, and you can always choose both. And while you're choosing, let me tell you the timing for this reading. This reading is for June 21st through the 28th. And the flavor of this reading, we've got Pluto. This is the power purge planet. So it's talking about empowerment and purging, which goes very much with what uh, the team was saying. And the sign of Pisces, which is all about the subconscious mind, your dreams, your idealizations, and the highest version of yourself in the eighth house of transformation, right? So something's shifting here and it has to do with personal power. So let's check it out. For those who are choosing action, your spiritual action at this time is to resurrect your dreams as a life or death issue. Man, I feel like we've gotten this one recently. We've definitely got gotten it within the last few months. They really want us to focus on the highest timeline they want you to focus on what's the ideal outcome what do you dream this is going to be make that the priority right now what do you dream life is going to be where do you desire to see it go it's time to continue to focus on that whenever they send me this message I always remind myself of my higher timeline mantra which is basically I'm saying I've decided we are on the highest timeline for the good of all humanity, that we are on the Ascension Paradise timeline, and I don't know how this is happening, I just know it is happening because I've decided it is happening. So if you're interested in that one, you can go to the Modern Mystic Soul podcast. I have a whole meditation around that that helps you dig into the vision you're holding for the future, not just for yourself, but the vision you hold for the future of humanity. So check out that podcast if you want some inspiration about how to tap back into the vision you're holding. And this vision is very much connected to your soul mission, right? It's part of the contract. It's part of why you decided to incarnate on earth at this time. Um, so spending some time connecting to that, even if you're not sure what it is yet, just tap in with the intention of feeling that energy and it's gonna help you get more clear on what, what do you see? Not what are you afraid to see, but what is the vision you hold? Mental action at this time. Get to the heart of your idealization of getting and using power. So again, they keep reiterating that they want us to get clearer on our relationship with power. And what does the idealization of power look like? I think that we might tend to hold that more where we feel powerless. Like you might not notice it where you feel in your power because you're already in your power. Where we tend to idealize power is where we feel out of power. So you want to focus on the areas of your life where you feel like I'm not, I don't have the power here. I can't change that. I can't do anything about that. Then you want to look at what do you fantasize or idealize that would look like if you had power? What would it, I would change them. I would change that situation. We want to get clearer on this because it can help us look at whether or not we're holding uh, some of the universal laws. Are we, are we in moral connection with universal laws? Like for example, the law of free will. So do we believe if we had power in this situation, we could change someone else, change their mind, uh, change their behavior? Because you can't. That's against the law of free will and power doesn't get used like that. We can persuade people, but does that even feel like it's in alignment with your moral 
uh, ideals, like the, the way you would conduct yourself with power. So it's a really good time to get clear on where you feel out of your power and what you believe having power would give you in that situation and then really assess that belief. And if it's not a belief that's truly in alignment with what you feel is uh, morally all right, then you can know like, hey, this is a misalignment here. It's actually not even in tune with my values or belief system. So this is a place where I could let this go. I could cleanse this from me and I could recognize that just being in my power, being able to have my own free will and focus on my own sovereignty allows me to let other people be free to do the same. Physical action at this time, do or die, be a part of something overwhelming and use other people's resources. Okay, so the being a part of something overwhelming is recognizing your place in the collective consciousness. You know, this is the information that's often withheld, was withheld by magical society type groups, especially those who would go dark and wish to use this information against us. The being a part of something overwhelming um, and using other people's resources is sort of what they have done or they definitely are good at utilizing it. And they're telling us the boomerang is here and it is time for us to do the same, but not in the same way because again, we don't go against free will. Instead, we assert our own free will. And a great example of this is when you see or hear information, especially if it feels like it's something that could affect you directly. For example, my friend Amber, she lives in Canada. They're trying to pass some obnoxious laws that would make getting um, supplements, vitamins, much harder and much more expensive. Um, and, you know, she has a clean and healthy lifestyle. She uses supplements that are important to her, to the work she does, and to the clients she helps. And so this information is very upsetting to her. And what I reminded her is that one of the most powerful tools we have is using our, our awareness that we're part of the collective energy. And by simply stating that you do not consent to this, just stating it out loud, helps to alter the frequency of that intention. Meaning that if you want something to go through, you would use that collective consciousness power, your agreement to it, to help it, to assist it go through. But if you didn't want something to go through, you would put up your non-consent. And what that does is it shifts the intention. It the the intention in and of itself needs a lot of energy behind it for it to manifest. But if though if there are enough people that do not wish for that to manifest, it changes what happens to it. So let's say everybody agreed, yes, let's get rid of vitamins or let's make them expensive or let's ban them. Let's say everybody agreed upon that and that energy helps that come to full fruition. But now let's say a lot of people don't agree to it and they reject it, they say no, then what they might find happens is it, it tries to manifest and it fails. It falls short of what it intended to do. It falls apart because it doesn't have our collective energy behind it. And the cards are saying right now, you have power right now where you are, no matter how uh, far you think you are from any subject. It doesn't matter if it's health, doesn't matter if it's war, doesn't matter if it's uh, atmosphere, it does not matter. You have a power to sway simply by stating whether or not you agree with uh, an intention to follow through or not. So you can use the power you have right in this moment to assist or to sway or change anything that's being presented to the collective. And they're letting you know that now's the time to do it. Say it. Say what you agree with, say what you don't agree with, and then follow through with your actions as well. So if you, you know, if you uh, don't agree with, like, I don't agree with seed oils being put in everything, right? So what I'm going to do is make sure that I'm more conscientious and I'm not buying things with seed oils or not going to restaurants that use a lot of seed oils, right? This is an example of, I stated my lack of consent to it, and now I am following up with my own actions to align to that reality more. I hope that made sense. 
right, so now look, let's look at outcomes for Pluto in Pisces in the eighth house of transformation. The spiritual outcome at this time is the need for control of spirituality to ultimately experience personal power. So what they're letting us know with this card is that personal power has a spirituality component. You don't really fully experience it without having some spiritual control. Now, it looks different for everyone. I don't think you have to follow a certain doctrine in order to activate personal power, but there is a spiritual component and that's some, something that are letting us know that we can't deny. There's a spiritual component to personal power. And again, I think when I feel into it, it's recognizing my sovereignty, right? There's nothing happens to me that I don't ultimately agree to. I just have to figure out how did I agree to this? If I went in a situation that I don't like, and I'm like, well, nothing happens to me that I didn't agree to, then my job, at least from my point of view, is I need to figure out where I gave my consent here. What did I do, right? Or, or not do. <laughs> what actions did I, or didn't I take? What decisions did or didn't I make that put me in the scenario I find myself in? And when I figure that out, boom, that's responsibility, and responsibility connects to personal power. There is a, this is a moment where you're going to want to feel your spiritual power. For those of you who are spiritual in nature anyway, this is going to be easy. For those who are listening who feel conflict with the word spirituality, then I would suggest that you find something, um, whether it's your breath or life force energy, what can you get behind that allows you to feel a sense of um, that it's a powerful source that you can tap into that allows you to find your sovereignty. That's what you want right now. Mental outcome at this time. An obsession with trusting your psychic knowledge of the mysteries of life. So we're in a period of time where, and I think it has to do with both the Schumann going wild and magical, this portal that opens on the summer solstice, and the fact that we're in a period of time where intuition is highlighted because we're in cancer season, and that does that does open up for all of us. So um, we might find ourselves obsessed with tapping into this energy, right? Um, tapping in and trying to see deeper into how does this all operate? I know I go through periods, like I go through cycles of this all the time where I'm like, I want to see it all. I want to see it all. I have to constantly remind myself I'm only going to be shown as much as I can handle and as much as is necessary because you can overwhelm someone with information. I've done it to myself. I've accidentally done that to other people. You can get too much information. For those of you who love to learn, who love to dig, who are curious, we're like, it's like we can never get enough information. Um, and so you might find yourself over thinking or over emphasizing. Like when I said, let's do a purifying ritual or a cleansing ritual, that's really meant to be like, a ritual doesn't happen daily like that. That kind of ritual is something that you're doing intentionally. It's uh, like a ceremony that opens up and starts something. And an obsession would be like, I have to do this every day. No, I have to do it twice a day. Now, what if I did it more? What if I tried to stay here as long as possible? Then you're not in a ritual anymore. Now you're in an obsession. And so it's letting us know that during this period, maybe you get a taste of your personal power or you get a taste of the mysteries of life or you get a taste of some serious spiritual wisdom. Um, getting a taste for it right now can create that obsession to try and get more. And the recommendation would obviously be pace yourself, slow down. You're going to get what you need, right? You're, you're going to get what you need. You will get it. So we don't have to overdo it and we don't have to continually go after it. Set it, do the intention and let it unfold itself. And if you find yourself obsessing over it, breathe, relax, know that you're tapping in, know that the spiritual power you seek to have control of at this time, it's already within you and you don't have to squeeze, you know, squeezing or tightening or forcing is a way to actually limit your psychic conductivity. 
So as much as we want to grasp and understand, the goal is to let go and allow. And in that way, you'll get everything you need uh, without getting over overdosed with it. Physical outcome at this time, a power struggle resulting from the indecision of or about a major change. Yeah, this kind of goes with the last statement, but what they're showing me with, with this is some of us feel these effects pretty deeply. Maybe we're already open. Maybe it was just the timing was right for us. And you might hear people talking about having these amazing experiences, like these big shifts. And you might find that um, you ha you've set an expectation up within yourself that it's like, okay, well, if, if Therese shifted like that, then I'm supposed to shift like that. And if I don't, then I missed it. And, and we get really worked up and into the story and into comparison. And like I said, this is a time where it's sort of a reckoning between uh, understanding where you're in and out of power and where we feel out of power. Like, let's say when spiritual hits happen, we feel, I mean, how many people, myself included, sit down to meditate and we secretly hope we get hit with the lightning bolt of awareness. Like the message drops in or the aha happens. Many times when you sit down to meditate, sometimes all you're doing is just slowing down your breath and being present with that. And that's about as much as you get. Um, and so a sense of ambition or a desire to control the process might kick in right now or a desire to compare because like I said, huge energy shifts, major shifts just happened and people are talking about it. They're sharing their experiences. So it's easy to get caught up in the, I have to hurry up and get it. Or if I didn't get it the way you got it, then maybe I am missing something or I'm not on the bus. You're on the bus. Okay, we're all on the bus <laughs> and we're not all experiencing the ride the same way right? We're everybody sitting in a different part of the bus, you know, it's bring me back to the school bus days, but I always like to sit over the wheels because anytime it went over the bump, it was like you got to <laughs> bounce the highest, right? But that is a great metaphor for the fact that we're all in this together. We're all having this experience. Some of us are going to have some intense moments while others have a smoother ride. And it says nothing about the quality of your ride. You're still getting to the destination together. We're still going together. We're just having a slightly different experience on our way there. So if we can stay conscious and present that while these great shifts and changes are happening, we're all going to have a different experience. Some of us are going to have really um, turbulent experience because we've got a lot we're still trying to release. Others of us are going to have really sleepy experiences where it's like, all I did was sleep. Other people still are going to have amazing ahas and uh, huge waves of creativity and all sorts of things, all, all sorts of understandings. And there's no way to do this that's the right way. We're simply having an experience. So if we can stay in the place of trust that we're all on the bus, we're all going to go to that next destination together, then we can simply relax, enjoy the ride, and let whatever information comes through, come through so we can enjoy it and we can trust that that's exactly what I needed. Whatever I get is exactly what I needed. Whatever you get is exactly what you needed. And with that, I'm sending you so much love. Have a fantastic week. Mm -hmm.